introduce All right. So we recently read the book Wild Bird in Mr. Rolston's class. And it was about a girl named Wren who got mixed up in alcohol and drugs during middle school and high school and her trying to battle that. She's gone to several therapists and stuff like that did not help her. So she got sent away to a wilderness camp to basically provide what she needed in her life. And at the end, everything ended up okay. But not everything always ends up okay in life. People OD, things happen before you can get that help. So this documentary is supposed to help those people before they OD. We will interview several people throughout this documentary to show how life can be so quick that you won't even know it. My name is Joey Rice and this is Jacob and this is our documentary. Peace. Um, do you agree how they judge drugs in the community? In our community here in Marion? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, obviously a bad thing. Uh, and it's really impacting the community and, and the effectiveness of, of people living their lives. Do you think the number of users in Marion is bad for our size of the town? Yeah. And what, what is the number, do you know? Did you find out that statistic? No, we didn't know. But it's pretty high, though, right? Um, I think it's like exceptionally high. So yeah, what that tells me is that there's a big problem. And the bigger the problem, obviously, the bigger the um, impact it will have on the community and how it trickles down. Because things like this tend to snowball. Uh, the more users you have, the, the more it becomes popular and passed on through friends, through family, to other people, unfortunately. And it's a, kind of like a spiraling effect. So I think um, due to the size of the problem in Marion, it's becoming an epidemic, really. Okay. We know you have taught event, or E plus R equals O, which is event plus response equals outcome in your classroom. Do you feel that this being taught will really affect the community? Yeah. I mean, what I hope to see happen is you guys take this stuff home teach your parents it because that's how we start really spreading the idea of E plus R equals O, showing its power and how it can affect people and help change their lives and get them, uh, you know, making those elite responses that we're trying to form to get those amazing outcomes. So the more you guys talk about it at home, I think the more parents will pick up on it and the more parents that we have picking up on it, and that's how it ripples through the community, through businesses, through how we interact with people. I think uh, it, it could become a, a very powerful and prevailing thing if, if we let it like catch on, like wildfire. Have you ever been pressured to use drugs or known a close one who has used? If so, how did you avoid or help this that situation? So, growing up, I was always into sports, and that right off the bat helped me kind of stay on the good path because. You know, I saw what, what drugs could do to people, to their performance. Um, like, fortunately for me, I didn't grow up around heroin or, or hard drugs like that. So I didn't have to face any of those, you know, really bad drugs. But, um, you know, I think I was kind of lucky where I was sheltered where I grew up. And then going to boarding school, you know, we really didn't have that because you get kicked out. And so we didn't mess around. Okay. We recently read Wild Bird and Ren, our protagonist, was offered drugs and took them by instinct with no thought. In Ren's scenario, Meadow wanted her to do drugs. Ren had two options. She could say yes and do drugs or say no and walk away. They both have completely different outcomes. One can be good and one can be bad. The E in that was Meadow gave Ren drugs. The response was Ren accepted them. The outcome was Ren 
had to go to Desert Camp. If you were a recovering drug addict and we told you about E plus R equals O, then you were offered drugs, what would you do? That's a great question. And I think that gets to the heart of the matter of what E plus R equals O does. What it does is it gives you kind of that armor, that that moment of reflection. So when you already know you have a problem with something like heroin or, or a harder drug like that, that once you start, you can't stop. I think knowing how to control your response will allow you that moment where you can break that autopilot response. Like, you know, for Ren, she knew it was wrong, and yet she still did it. So if you can have that disciplined approach to something where you can quickly identify, yes, this is wrong, but even more importantly, act on that by saying to yourself, okay, wait, I have control here of my response. You don't respond in the way that would lead to those old outcomes. Now you respond in a way that leads you down who you are now, who you want to become, a person not doing drugs. So it gives you that moment in time where you can quickly reflect and say, nope, I'm not doing it. Have the power and control to choose a different trajectory, choose a different path and become a better person. So, I like how you phrase that question. That's all that we have, and thank you for helping us with our project. Thanks, guys. Look forward to seeing the outcome of this. with Marion County Sheriff's Office, but uh, as of right now, I am the school resource officer for River Valley High School and Middle School and Elementary Schools. Okay. Uh, can you explain the increase of drugs in Marion recently? Well, there's not really a sound reason. The only reason that we have drugs is one, people enjoy using them because of what they feel after they use them. And I guess the biggest thing is because the money revenue that the seller uh, gets for selling the drugs to the people that wants to use them. Um, a lot of the reason why people use the drugs that they, uh, that they are using, such as heroin, you know, uh, crack, cocaine. A lot of it is because of depression or they've given up hope on what their future can hold for them. So there's a lot of people that uh, use them that they have a education, but when it comes to having a good sound job, they don't have a good sound job. So they replace that with drug use because of their depression. So they would rather just lay around being high on them drugs than to search for either a higher education to get them a good paying job or just they're just down in life. A lot of it's caused by uh, their own personal life when it comes to maybe boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, the lack of having what they want, new car, new home, but they don't know that the only thing they're doing is digging a deeper ditch and deep, a deeper hole for themselves, especially when they get caught, because once they get caught, then 99% of the time they're charged with a felony, and any time you have a felony, it's very difficult to get a good paying job. Okay. Our next question. Have you ever had to confiscate drugs or arrest any users? Oh, absolutely. I've... I've confiscated many drugs and I've arrested uh, people 
that use those drugs. Um, I've also in turn went to a lot of people that has OD'd and that has passed away, uh, which have died. And that's, that's the worst thing that, that I've experienced, knowing that they could get help, but they choose not to get help because they desire the drug more than they desire the help. And the reason why they desire the drug is because they think they can't lick that habit. But they can, but they don't have the willpower to do so. Uh, can you explain some differences in the average drug user and the regular citizen, both physically and mentally? Uh, say that again? Can you explain some differences in the average drug user, both physically and mentally? Your average drug user, some of them, they go a little bit too far, but your average drug user, they, they don't really tackle the hard drugs, such as uh, heroin and crack. They, they, they more like, they like the, the marijuana. They, it's like somebody on the weekend, they can't wait to get paid so they can go out and get drunk. They'll get them a six pack or a 12 pack, get a little buzz on them and have, enjoy the weekend. That's your average, uh, the average drug user, which is marijuana. They'll smoke a little bit of uh, pot to get high and, you know, just get a little bit of a buzz. But your hard drugs are the ones that are hooked on heroin. And you only have to use it one time until you're hooked. And it's a shame. Um, your, your hard drug users, they start out. I would say they start out with alcohol. Then they go from alcohol to marijuana. And then from marijuana, they want a little bit higher buzz. So they'll either go to crack or they'll go to heroin. Uh, a lot of them use prescription drugs. But it doesn't start, people normally do not start using heroin or crack. It's always something lighter first. And then they want to escalate their, uh, uh, them being high or you know, street name Buzz. They want to be buzzed. And the non-users, um, when it comes to drugs, most of them, well, not most of them, but a lot of them, they'll just drink alcohol. A little bit of beer, a little bit of whiskey, get a buzz, and they're done for the weekend, and they go back to work or wherever they, whatever they do during the day. So, I mean, you, you can definitely tell the difference between someone using heroin and crack than someone that's not because anyone that's on crack or anyone that's on heroin, they'll sell everything they have just to obtain that drug because it's such a bondage to them. And a lot of times they have nothing because they sell everything that they obtain. Okay, number three. We have been taught E plus R equals O, which is event plus response equals outcome. How do you think this can be implemented to addictions, therapy, and law enforcement? Well, anything you do in life, there's a consequence, no matter if it's good or no matter if it's bad. And I believe in, in what the good book says when the book, the, when the good book says, if you sow a seed, you reap a harvest. And it doesn't matter what kind of seed that you sow. You can sow a good seed or you can sow a bad seed. If you sow a good seed, I guarantee you, without, a, without doubt, that that good seed that you sowed will come back to you. It will, somehow, some way. And that's the same with a bad seed. If you sow a bad seed, that bad seed's gonna come back to you somehow, some way. A farmer, when he goes out into the field, he plants corn, or wheat, or soybeans. He expects a harvest, and he will get a harvest because he planted one of those seeds. And it's the same with, with, with everyday life. If you're good to somebody, somebody's going to be good to you. If, somebody gives you a piece, if you give somebody a piece of bubble gum, I guarantee you 
somewhere in life, someone's going to give you a piece of bubble gum also. So it, the outcome is whatever you do, bad, good or bad, it's going to come back. And the, and the outcome depends upon what you sow or what you do. It, it's like this. If, you, uh, if you're in school and the teacher tells you you've got a homework assignment and it's due in two days, and if you don't have it done, what's the outcome? You get in trouble. You're not going to get a good grade. Well, you sowed the seed because you neglected to do what you were told to do. It's just like a farmer planting corn. If He might have a thousand acres of corn or a thousand acres of land. But if he doesn't put seed in that, in that land, he's not going to get no corn. So whatever you apply to, whatever you give, is what you get back. So it's just like in school. Whatever you do, your effort, and if it's, if, it's, if it's less effort, you're going to get less of a grade. But if you give it all you got, then you're going to get a pretty good grade because you gave it all you had. Uh, we were hearing more and more about drug overdoses in Marion through websites with true stories of people here in Marion. Some show how a good person can become a user in minutes. Have you seen any of your friends or someone you know become a user that you never thought would do this? Absolutely. I've got relatives that became users that I didn't think that they would, uh, they would become users. Fortunately, they didn't have a very good job, so they was able to kick that habit fairly quick because, for one thing, they didn't want to go to jail because they know that if they, they would steal, they would get caught, they would go to jail. But I've also seen people uh, that would, not, not relatives, but I've also seen people that would take drugs and use them, and then the only way they could supply their habit is to steal, steal, steal. That's the reason why that people steal from Walmart, they steal from Royal King, they steal from Kohl's. They'll steal anything they can to make a buck so they can feed that habit. Now, I've had a couple relatives on my wife's side that um, they, was, uh, they was heroin addicts. And thank God they was able to go to a recovery. It took a while. It took, a, it took some time and some effort on their side, but they was able to lick that habit. And it wasn't something that they could do overnight either. It, it took them a few months, maybe even a year or so. But they was able to, uh, they was able to break that habit. Thank you for letting us interview you, and that's all we have. Okay, you're welcome.
Deputy Sheriff for the Delaware County Sheriff's Office. All right. Uh, Kevin, have you ever noticed uh, differences in the amount of drugs in Marion and the amount of drugs in Delaware? Yes. Um, they are the same, even though Delaware has a lot more money. There's a lot more affluent suburbs and stuff like that. That doesn't mean there's a decrease in drugs. There's just as big a drug problem in Delaware County as there is in Marion, if not greater, because a lot of people can afford to buy a lot of drugs, especially in the schools that's out of control. Uh, how many people do you think on average that you have to arrest in a year for drugs? Um, it varies job to job. Um, like a guy who's in the patrol division, um, sometimes it's every day, sometimes it's every other day, depending on traffic stops or like we at the sheriff's office have our specialized unit, it's called the Drug Task Force, where that's all they do is buy drugs from drug dealers and then bust them after that, or, or they set up stings, or they try to find out who's growing marijuana in their house and bust them. Um, it's, it's day to day. Uh, when you're on duty, have you ever had to arrest someone that you knew that you did not think would get involved in drugs? Can you repeat the question? It's loud. Have you ever had to arrest somebody that you know while you were on duty that you wouldn't think would get involved in drugs? Uh, no. Um, I've arrested a few people that just by looking at them, you wouldn't think, wow, that person's a junkie or something like that. But um, that I've personally known that I thought, wow, there's no way. Uh, maybe a couple of times, but that's just by looking at them. Uh, what do you think, this is going to be the last question, what do you think the uh, difference between uh, Delaware drugs increase and Marion's drug increases, do you think it's a big difference or a smaller difference? I think the, the, the usage is about the same. Uh, again, I talked about the money that Delaware has compared to Marion, but um, a lot of people in Marion, uh, as far as talking opiates like heroin and, and stuff like that, a lot of people that are addicted to that stuff start out by taking pain pills because of an injury, an injury, shoulder injury, or what have you. Um, drug problem in Delaware County Schools is that students that have started out with pain pills as an injury, they just take it out of curiosity or just that they have the money to do it. So uh, a school like Old Tangy Liberty or Old Tangy Orange or these schools that have a lot of money compared to the schools here in Marion, the drug problem is just as big as not big. It's a problem. Thank you. I just hope I was uh, good dealt with some of the answers. I hope I Hi, my name is Chris Klingel and I'm the school counselor here at the River Valley Middle School. Okay. Over the years, have you counseled more kids or more kids because of drugs? I've counseled a few kids because of drugs, but not necessarily because they were taking drugs. There may be drugs in their family somewhere, like a brother or sister is taking them that are older, and, and in that case, those kids still have some extra problems then. Okay. Question number two. Would you say that there has been an increase of drugs here in this school? I have not seen an increase in drugs in this school. I think maybe if we took our whole school district, you know, um, I think there probably at the high school has been a little bit of an increase in drugs. Last question. Have you had any student you hoped ever get involved in drugs? Yeah, I have had. Um, not necessarily when I was working with them, though. It, it is, as they've gotten older, 
you know, sometimes when their when their uh, issues aren't totally taken care of, um, and they and they can continue to be in that same environment, um, that that's one one way that they find to try to help themselves. Uh, so we're talking about drugs and more over. Have you ever had a family member get involved and you have to deal with that personally? I've been lucky and I have not had a family member involved in drugs. Um, and so personally, no. I have had a couple of friends who have family members that have been and it's it's a it's hard on the whole family. Lots of times there's a lot of tough love that has to happen. Uh, with the kids that you counsel, is it hard being a counselor when you know that these kids could end up in bad situations as they get older? Yeah, it's very hard. It's uh, you know I have to keep a balance uh, uh, for myself personally, but. I, there are a lot of kids I worry about as they leave here and I don't get to see them every day that of what they may end up doing. Um, so recently, in Mr. Wilson's class, we read the book Wild Bird. We're trying to tie E plus R equals O into it. Can you please like give us a little bit about like E plus R equals O? In E plus R equals O, I really like the idea of looking at your response, and but then looking at some other alternative responses that you could have give, given to come up with the outcome that you needed to, to make it a positive situation for you. Um, when you have when you have events that happen, good or bad events, your response that you give may affect the response that someone else also gives. And therefore, the outcome may not be exactly what you wanted. So be, when you have your response, you gotta be able to look at yourself and then be able to see, be open to seeing other responses. That was our last question. Thank you for letting us interview you. Yeah, thanks for having me.